So I was born in Israel. I'm actually Israeli. I was born in um, Rishon Etzion to a very modest family. Um, actually, poor family, I must say. My father didn't have a job. And we were all um, living in Rishon Etzion. And at the age of 11, I remember myself going to the supermarket and asking for them for some um, milk uh, to give us and we will pay in the future uh, once my mom could bring some money home. So I really grew up poor, what I thought was poverty. Then we moved to France. My parents bought a pizzeria and I always wanted to do something good and help other. I came to the US when I was 20. I wanted to learn English and go to study. I'm the only one in my family that today has a degree. Today I have a master's uh, in energy development from Columbia University. And when I was 20 years old, I was looking for a summer job. And I met Nakash family. Do you know Jordash jeans? Jordash? So I went to him and I said, I'm looking for a job. And he said, you know what? You speak French? Let me send you to Madagascar in Africa. I said, all right, why not? Go and check on the quality control of the genes. And I said, fine. And then I got to Madagascar. And Madagascar is very poor, very poor. And what I thought was poverty when I was young in Israel and Rishon and Zion has nothing to do with what we are seeing in Africa. I remember the image of the woman dead. I'm sorry to tell you the description, but that would stayed with me. And the baby still trying to get milk, right? And then over the years, they sent me some other African countries. And again, I'm seeing the same problems. People are looking for water. People don't have food. People don't have access to electricity, vaccines, medicines. And I wanted to try and help. It took me a little bit to understand that really what is missing in Africa is energy. Because without energy, there's no electricity. Once you leave the airport, how many of you have been to Africa? Let me see. All right, so you've been, or some of you. So you know that once you leave the airport, there is no access to energy. And yet, although they have water beneath their feet, there is no energy to pump it. So I remembered when I was younger that um, I seen solar panels on top of every building in Israel. And I was a student six years ago, and I said, you know what? Probably Israel has the technology to help. I came to Israel, met with some Israeli companies, and went to Africa. The first, I've installed solar panels on a medical clinic six years ago. We gave them light, refrigeration, and then we continued one more village, another village, another village. Today we have helped to 78 villages in Africa, all with Israeli technologies, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about how uh, we are operating on the ground. I'm going to need an help to go back to the first slides um, so that um, we can do that. So our organization, Innovation Africa, really the man is only bringing what Israel has the best in Israel just to take the technology and to share it in the villages. Because Israel has the technology and the know-how, and that's what we're looking to do. The organization is an American organization. I founded it in New York. It's still in New York. It's a 501c3. I live in Israel now because I came with my husband, and we have three babies, and we live in Israel. But everything is operating from the US. We were very lucky that we are now part of the United Nations. And we have received the Innovation Award from the United Nations for Israeli technologies. So it's good to be uh, recognized by the UN. But most of the donations coming from the US, we are bringing the donation to Israel. We are buying the technology from here, and then we are sending them to the villages. 78 projects, five countries, and we are now working. Next week, I'm going to Congo. Congo, the poorest country in the world, and we are going to be starting and helping in the Congo. I've never seen anything like it. Unfortunately, there is a lot that needs to be done there. Here's a quick list of all of the villages that we have helped in Uganda, 
in Tanzania, Malawi, as you can see, as a conservative number, we have about 660,000 people. Here, I only took in consideration the students and the schools, the orphanages, the people in the village. So, energy. Energy is really what I found to be the problem. 15 years ago, when I first went to Africa, and as you can see, even today, 54 countries, very few people have never seen a light bulb, yeah? And I truly believe that without access to energy, it's very hard to have any kind of development. And I think the movie uh, show it to you. So we are only going to villages where no one is going to. If there is no drought, if it's not far, we are not there. We are going to places where they've never seen white people before, and we're trying to help as much as we can. What we are seeing is the following. People are spending hours every day looking for wood, wood for warming themselves, wood for cooking, and water. Water is a problem. Here's uh, about uh, three months ago, I was in a village in Uganda. I spoke to the ladies with my team. We walked for about 45 minutes, and then we got to this place. This was the only source of water they have for about 4,000 people. And then we continue, and I got to Malawi. You can see me there in front of the pictures. And then we walked again for a long time until we got to this place. And that's, again, the only source of water. They have to dig by hand so that they can have water. Um, if you are a student and if you want to make it, there is no access to electricity, so it's very hard. Candles are very expensive, and so it's very hard for students to make it. So what we are doing, very simply, we haven't invented anything. It's simple, it's cheap, it's, it's, it's cheap, it's not expensive to do, and it can be done. We're getting to the villages and we are just installing that system. We bring the drilling machine so that we can drill deep to the aquifers, we bring the solar panels, we install pumps, so the energy from the solar panels is helping to make work the solar pump. The water is then pumped to the water tank, and from there it goes to water stations. As you've seen in the movie, we're able to pump about 20,000 liters of water and give it to a village of about 4,000 people about 12 water stations in the village, and now they have access to water every day, and then they can grow food, and then they can sell the food in the market, and I'm very lucky that we can help women, and those women, now that they have money, usually are opening businesses, and here's just an example of a village where the woman took the money, bought a chicken, and now they have this chicken farm. And I just came back from uh, Malawi and another a village, they just bought a cow, and now they're selling the meat. So it's good to see that they have economic development. All of it, the most I've seen, cost $30,000. It really depends how deep is the aquifer. Medical clinics. I'm a mother of three kids. Unfortunately, I was opened twice, C-section twice. If I was in the villages, I will be dead by now. Because what we are seeing, is that they don't have access to electricity. You see them sitting, no doctors, maybe a nurse, but definitely no access to vaccines and medicines. Why? Why they don't have access to vaccines and medicine? Because we don't have access to refrigeration, right? No electricity. So we just come very quickly, we bring the solar panels, Israeli technologies, we install them on the roof, we give them light, small refrigerations, and now they have access to vaccines and medicines. Schools, we're going to schools, we are seeing them, we are coming, installing solar panels, giving them light, and then helping them to graduate and have a better life this way. The same for the orphanages, I'm always looking for orphans, uh, no father, no mother, trying to get them water, food, electricity, and we're also buying them mattresses because usually they don't have. Do I speak about Israel? Yes, I do. I'm not a diplomat, I'm not a politician, I'm a mother, and I'm a Zionist. I care about Israel. Do they know what is Israel? Most of them do not yet. The ministers do, the local government does, 
and I'm interacting with them as well. But I'm believing that one day they will remember that Israel was there to help them. Altogether, less than $10,000 to power a school, a medical clinic, $6,000, $7,000. That's all what it takes to go and really change and impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Now, some of you are wondering, how are you going to make it sustainable? And where is the Israeli technology in it? One of the questions that I had when I started the organization, who is going to change the light bulbs, right? We're going to so remote villages. Who is going to change the light bulbs and the batteries? They don't have money. The orphans cannot. The nurses cannot do it. And then while being in the villages, they realized they don't have food, they don't have shoes, but what do they have? Cell phones. Is that true? For those who have been in Africa, do you remember seeing them? They get cell phones for free. And then I said, where do you charge your cell phones? There are no energy. And then we started to create businesses. So today, we have 75 businesses in Africa. I'm taking women, I'm training them about how to open a business where people are coming, charging their phones, paying 15, 10 to 15 cents, and the money is deposited in the bank account and used to replace the batteries and replace the light bulbs. Good news, very successful businesses. They actually have more money than they need. From Israel, very quickly, I'm very lucky to be living here and working with companies. And um, one, four of them I would like to mention. One of them is these bags. This is why we got the Innovation Award from the United States from United Nation. These packs that we are installing in every one of the projects sends information through SMSs to a server in Israel that is then allowing me to monitor everything that they are doing. Here is an example of a medical clinic in Tanzania. I know when they use the energy, open the light bulbs, and when they close the light bulbs. If something goes wrong, meaning there is no production of energy for 48 hours, I get an alert and our people get alert and we are going and fixing them. So monitoring everything that we're doing remotely in the most remote villages in the world, especially in Africa, it's terrific. We bring Israeli-made computers to the villages. We bring a system that is allowing us to make sure that nothing is being stored. It's Israeli lax. And of course, we bring the drip irrigation something that Israel has been using for many, many years. In the US, we are very lucky. We are a young organization. You're actually looking at the oldest. Average age of donor, 32 years old. We have over 700 volunteers. We have 47 people following us on Twitter and Facebook. Everybody is very young, including my staff. Everybody working with me. Um, we are a very young organization attracting a lot of young people. In Africa, we have people that we took from the villages working with us, and obviously everybody, everybody was trained by Israeli engineers that I brought. Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah, all of those online campaigns, the volunteers, university, speaking about Israel, about Israeli innovations, and now we're helping others. It's apparently very sexy for the young uh, population, and we are very happy to be working with them. Israel. It's more, very important to me, and as I mentioned earlier, we are, uh, I'm trying to make sure that people know that Israel gets better PR than uh, it gets now, because Israel deserves a better PR, and we are trying to do our best so that people are aware of what we are doing, but what Israel has been doing for many, many years now in Africa and in developing countries, and uh, trying to share that with others. This is it. My time is off, so thank you for listening. And uh, if you have more questions, I will be here to answer. Thank you. Thank you.